you know, there's this black and white decision needing to be made when people have a lot of problems with their smile. And um, the, uh, there's not, things aren't black and white. So a lot of times they can be, uh, but a lot of times we're finding ourselves in this gray area, this area that it's hard to know, should we be taking the teeth out or we, should we be keeping the teeth? And uh, one of the huge advantages of finding an office or a practice or a dentist that uh, is comfortable fixing teeth and doing implants or removing teeth is that, that gray area, that, that area that kind of uh, may not be so certain that you should have your teeth removed or it, it might make more sense to remove them. You, you need to be able to have a discussion with someone that can be your advocate and doesn't have uh, you know, any sort of bias to try to push you one way or the other. Uh, I feel like that's the advantage that I can bring people, especially on this channel. Um, I can help you think through these tough decisions on should I be removing my teeth, should I be keeping my teeth, um, and that's really important, right? You don't want to waste your money uh, with, with your reconstructing your smile. You want to get it to a result that is healthy and provides you lots of long-term benefits. So, yeah. Hi, is Emax teeth t safe? So I think it's a great question. You're asking about materials, right? The material question is a good question to ask. You should definitely know what material. Um, this is something I got into discussion with, and I'll answer your question, I promise. I got in with a patient today. There's so many times patients uh, are given a material that they don't know is a totally inferior material. Uh, I'll give you an example. So full arch implant prosthetics, we put in a full arch of teeth and typically there's two different materials that people will go to. One is a nano ceramic. Think fancy term for plastic, okay? Um, I'm gonna upset a lot of people here that use nano ceramic. I'm, I'm in it for you, the patient. I'm telling you, nano ceramics wear down fast. And anybody dentist that tells you they don't, they're not telling you the truth. So I don't think they would probably lie to you. They'd probably tell you the truth. They do wear down. So do you wanna spend a lot of money on your nice new smile, all on four, all on six, and not realize that the material that was used is nano ceramic and it wears down and stains and, and does chip. So um, it's not very smooth either. So, so what happens a lot of times people have a lot more trouble with plaque. Zirconia, it's the premium material. It's the one you want for your final restoration. It's gonna be polished. So you ask about Emax. Emax is not something we would use for full arch implant uh, restorations, but we might use it for layering on a full arch implant restoration for a little added aesthetic touch. Uh, or possibly using it obviously for crowns, veneers, because it bonds so well to teeth. It has such great light properties that it looks very natural. So it's a, definitely a preferred material for aesthetics and uh, you know strength. So it kind of knocks those two out. I'm a huge fan of Emax, been using it. I've done thousands, probably tens of thousands at this point, restorations with Emax. Um, it's hard for me to change my trust to anybody else uh, because obviously my patients are trusting me. So. Uh, if you're going to trust me with your smile, I want to use something that I can have a lot of certainty in. Cool. All right. Any other questions? Doesn't look like it. I will go to, oh, there we go. Uh, let's see. This patient, uh, this person asks, how can a person who needs full mouth restorative get help or treatment with bad credit? Uh, that's a good point. Obviously, credit's a, a yeah, if you've been quoted 40000 even just dentures are, you know, yeah, there's, there's a, a lot of cost involved there, right? So how do we get the cost down? You know, for us, what we've done is we've tried to make things affordable by stepping people into uh, more premium treatments by making things, the steps bite size. We can obviously only do that to a certain price point. Um, give you an example. So let's say you just cannot afford to go from the, maybe you got a mess right now and you're going, I want to have an implant supported smile. And you're going, how do I get from where I'm at to, you know, the, the cost the tens of thousands of dollars it's going to cost to get there. And what we can do is we can actually, we have a process here in our office where we will remove the, the infected teeth, place, at least place the implants and give you a denture. Well, yeah, you might be in a denture for a bit, but at least you have the implants to stimulate the bone. You've one step ahead. And then when you're ready to pay the, the well, actually we put you on a payment plan in house. So we help absorb some of this cost. We can do it in one to two years. So you can either go $100 a month for uh, two years or uh, $200 a month for one, uh, sorry, am I getting this right? $200 a month for, I should never quote prices, but if you pay, basically we have a one to two years process to get to a set of teeth on those implants. And we can finance that in-house because really we're, we're, at that point, we're really doing a layaway system, right? So we try to help make things affordable. That's a good question. Obviously, offices can only do so much. We have to pay 
for quality materials. I had a gentleman today just ask me, can you, can you do anything better, doc? Can you do anything cheaper? And I said, he said, no, I, I really can't. I can finance and I can maybe, maybe do something uh, that's a different treatment, but I'm not going to substitute, I'm not going to substitute uh, the service or the materials that I'm going to use or the lab that I'm going to use or the implant system I'm going to use because I'm trying to cut corners and still make a buck. And I hope you can appreciate that and understand that. Um, you know, there's a lot more to dentistry than just uh, the first day that you get to enjoy your smile. It's long term. How does it hold up? Is it done correctly the first time? So I'm not trying to scare people, but there's a lot of horror stories out there. People who have gotten work done. It's been maybe a rush job. And usually, I mean, hopefully not a licensed dentist in the U.S., but a lot of times we're dealing with overseas because uh, it is significantly cheaper overseas. Everybody probably watching the channel knows that. So uh, dentistry is cheaper across the border, if you didn't know. Um, you, you, news, news flash, right? Um, but it's also going to be different uh, across the border. So, um, you know, I, I kind of went all over the place about cost there, but that's, that's definitely a factor that comes up when people are considering implants and veneers and there's new smile. So let's see, we have another question here. Uh, I cannot recommend this practice enough. That's awesome, man. I think so. Thank you for that, Bob. That's, it means a lot that you threw that out there. Amazing service. We do have an incredible team. And I'd say that uh, anybody watching, kind of considering which office to go to, and I'll make it, it really clear, the team will give it away, right? I mean, you expect the dentist to come into the room uh, and, and be on their game and be approachable, uh, have a good conversation, a good demeanor, that we call it bedside manner, right? They need to be uh, encouraging, helpful. They need to listen to you. Uh, they need to understand where you're coming from, what your goals are. That's really important, right? If a dentist is just trying to tell you what to do and isn't, hasn't asked questions to learn what you want uh, and what your goals are and what you want to achieve, that's, that's going to be a mess, right? That's somebody trying to force their ideas on you. And I, I don't think that's the way we should treat. We should really partner with people uh, using our professional, uh, in our, our professional nature and our experience uh, and our wisdom to help guide them to the best direction for them. We should be the, that type of a, a, a consultant in that way. Um, but I will tell you that when you walk into an office and you're going to get major work done, if you sense that the team is not on board with what the practice is doing, that should be a red flag that you, you might be finding yourself into some trouble, right? So huge important fact there, pay attention to the team. Why is dental work so cheap in South America? Yeah, so uh, you know they have totally different laws there. Um, the materials they're gonna use there, I tell you there's, there's uh, you can get implants of all different types, uh, different types of metals that aren't fully uh, titanium, uh, quality of the, the machined work. Uh, the materials for the teeth. The zirconia is incredibly cheap and it looks cheap, especially if it's not you know, used in an, uh, by a very talented lab. Um, one of the big factors in quality dentistry is the service component. You cannot, short, you can shortcut materials, maybe some, but if you're using cheap materials, you're gonna have to really make up for it with the master ceramist or the person that's turning that material into your final tooth. And so if you want things that look like chiclets or dentures uh, and you're paying for veneers, um, you know, go across the border, go to Turkey. I mean, the, I, I've seen so many videos of Turkey, teeth grind down to nothing, little nubs. I mean, those, those teeth are gonna break off of the gum line. They're gonna come into our office and need implants. Um, that's not a good service. That's not what you want. I'm not saying everybody overseas is like that, but I am saying the bulk of what I've seen from people looking for that, they're, they're just not getting the quality service. They're getting rushed in and out like cattle. And so, yes, it's uh, cheaper, of course. Um, you know, we have a nice big office and we see a lot of patients, but we also have four doctors and we have an amazing skilled team. So we're able to still give our patients uh, premium service. You know, and the, if we're doing large treatment, usually the doctor, like for myself, if I'm doing a full arch uh, implant case or cosmetic uh, veneer and crown case, I'm gonna be with you all day. I'm not, I'm not bouncing back and forth between four or five patients uh, trying to give everybody a great experience, which I you know is no physical way to possibly do that. So you're gonna get what you pay for there. Um, obviously you can only cut so many corners. And then you gotta understand too, there's, uh, there's licensing, there's uh, you know, real estate. All of these factors uh, play into a role um, for the, you know, the cost of the care you get. Also, I'll tell you right now, it, the biggest cost is a team. We pay top dollar for our team. We try to really invest in our team. It's not just what they get paid, it's what we pay in tra training and, and time and getting them up to speed and, 
and investing in them in team meetings. I mean, these are all factors that play into the quality of the dental team that you as a patient are going to experience. So, um, you know, that's a cost that uh, I'm not gonna cut because I want our patients to get the best. So, good questions. I can go on and on about that. But how did it, let's see, how to get rid of bad breath uh, after the full restoration with zirconia? Um, so if you have a lot of bad breath, you probably have some issues with um, maybe gum health. And so you ought to ask your hygienist, would probably be the best one to go to for that because they are going to really pay attention going around the gums and verifying that you don't have any tartar, cement, uh, anything that's trapping food, bacteria, plaque, that's gonna you know, cause that, that, that sour smell, that bad smell like you can get around your teeth. So I would say quality dental work should not have overhangs. It should not have food catches. We should be able to remove most of that for people, if not all, and it won't trap stuff and smell. So if your work smells, if you've just gotten dentistry done and it's not, it, it, you know, it didn't used to stink and now it does, you definitely need to go back and say, hey, is there something going on? Why, why, am I, why is my mouth you know, smelling? And it, that, would be, that would be the factor. You should have fresh breath. Um, you know, little joke here, my wife's got 20 veneers, got great breath, right? So uh, I did, did her veneers, made sure they were all right. Um, and so we don't have to worry about that, that mess. Good question. All right, so next question. Did you go to AGD GPR? Would you recommend one to the graduating dental student? You know, um, I'm a little torn on this and I'm not going to, I'm not gonna have a hard answer on this. I think everybody's a little different. Um, I will say this, for, for me, I am always chasing learning, right? I'm always reading something. I'm always uh, trying to figure out the latest. I mean, we were just uh, out of town for four days at, at, in Vegas trying to learn more about uh, technology and, and dentistry. So um, I'm always on f dental forums, watching videos of other dentists doing work, getting their ideas of how they've done it, um, comment, comment sections. I, man, I, I used to spend, uh, I, I still spend some, but I used to spend all my evenings uh, when I was first starting out uh, crown, doing learning how to use a, a same day crown machine um, on forums. So asking questions and learning. And so at some point you have to actually do the work. I'd say probably the best thing is getting experience after you've done these education, these uh, gotten your education. Because what happens is so many times you'll get education without experience, and that's really not helpful. Uh, you gotta have practical experience where you uh, are forced to face actually doing the work you've learned about. Um, and so I think GPRs can do that. I also think they could be a lot of education with minimal experience and hands-on. So. Um, take for that what it is, but uh, I think hopefully that, that maybe guides a little bit of that thought. All right, here, let's see, we got a few more questions. Um, do implants feel like real teeth? You know, um, implants, they, they will function like real teeth, but they're gonna feel slightly different because teeth move in the bone. So uh, when you're chewing, teeth are gonna give a little bit, right? Because they have a ligament that holds them in place. Implants are actually connected to bone. And so you're gonna have um, no movement of the implant. And so they're more solid, I'd say. And so that's a little different, especially if you're you know, used to your teeth giving a little bit. So you're not gonna have much give with implants. It, it won't hurt or anything, it just feels different, if that makes sense. If you wonder what I'm looking at, I've got all your text coming in here, so. Uh, okay, the next question. Looking forward to visiting in the coming year. Awesome, I'd love to see you. Uh, I know your site asks for a variety of in-depth questions. Yeah, we like to have your, so before you come see us, you're asking, hey, if I wanna come see you at Innovative Dental, first of all, go to yoursmiledestination.com, fill out that information there. Our team will be in touch with you. We do need some records, right? We're gonna need some uh, x-rays and we're gonna need a 3D cone beam if we can get one. If not, it's okay. At least x-rays and photos and we'll, that'll help get the discussion going. Um, and so uh, we do charge a small amount for that virtual consult but you get credited towards your treatment. So, and it's not much, we're not, we're not trying to make money on virtual consults. We wanna help people smile, so that's why we're doing them. And ho hopefully this will help those that are maybe wanting to learn more and ask me questions directly, but uh, aren't at the stage yet where they're ready to get a virtual consult or come here. So, you know, we're helping people even if you're not gonna come to Springfield. If you uh, connect with me and you think, hey, I think I could trust this guy, I hope you feel that way, but I'd be honored to see you. Go to yoursmiledestination.com. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below so you'll have that. But thanks for that question. All right, so we've got, uh, hello, what's up, Teta? And then we got, I got four crowns put on, four, uh, 
front top teeth. It was a good, let's see. You still there? Okay, good. I thought I heard a button there. Uh, I got four, okay. It was a good re job, really badly done, okay? All right, it just wasn't good. Uh, it's been more than 10 years. I always avoid people as much as I can because that's sad. That's a bummer in avoiding people. Yeah, that's, you know, that's one thing that I think is so rewarding about what we do um, here at Innovative Dental is the, the treatment we provide gives people quality of life. You know, it's nice to say that your smile looks good, but avoiding people makes me sad, right? I mean, you're literally not able to, um, you know, have a fullness of life because you're shy or embarrassed about your smile. And I feel like what we do here is we help give people confidence to trust us, and then we're able to give them a smile that rewards them with quality of life. They can go eat whatever foods they want. They can smile and laugh with their friends and celebrate life. Um, they can enjoy their families in a different way. Those are huge things. So yes, absolutely. Um, let's see. All right. Uh, hello. All right. Thank you. My teeth are extremely sensitive as Invisalign possible. Also can veneers fix an overbite. So, um, I'll take the first question here. Is Invisalign possible if your teeth are extremely sensitive? Yeah, you know, if they're sensitive, you might wanna to get to the bottom of that. If it's just gingival recession, and, which is typically what we see with uh, sensitive teeth, then uh, you're probably gonna be all right uh, as far as Invisalign. You may get a little more sensitive during the treatment. Um, but as far as an overbite, depends how much. If you've got uh, three millimeters or less, three, four millimeters or less of an overbite, uh, overbite would be, uh, you know, you're kind of like this, you're overclosed, we can use bite ramps on your trays to help intrude or push back your teeth. I'm a good example. I had two millimeters of overbite and I was able to correct that pretty correct, you know, pretty quickly. So um, it took me maybe six months uh, in treatment. That was about three or four years ago. There's some videos if you want to go, you know, in the channel, dig deep, go back maybe three or four years ago, see what the, this young guy before I ever touched YouTube was doing there with uh, Invisalign. So you can check that out. All right, we got another question. Can, so if you're just jumping on, you can ask me anything about full mouth uh, reconstruction. I'm gonna stick on for another maybe 10 minutes. Um, gotta get home to the family, grill some burgers out for the weekend. Uh, Dexter isn't with me today, he's at home napping. So if you're wondering if you don't see the dog back there, he's he stayed home today, so lazy, lazy dog. So, um, but uh, he's getting old, right? You know, he's doing good though. Can students from other countries go to training courses? Of course, yeah. Uh, so you might be asking that because you know that we do training here at Innovative Dental. We have a, uh, another business called Rayostat. It's a consulting training and uh, we have an app uh, and we're working on a marketing component to that. So we wanna help other offices that are trying to advance in, uh, their game and, and get better for their patients. Uh, and so one of the things obviously is we train the other dentists and teams to be able to provide some of the services that we offer here. So uh, one of those is definitely full arch implant prosthetic treatment. So I teach uh, docs and teams how to do that procedure uh, correctly for their patients using a, a really amazing protocol called Chrome Guided Smile. Um, that's just a detail that you, know, you don't really need to know as a patient, but it helps us uh, you know, perfectly place the implants, deliver a prosthetic same day within an hour, hour and a half of, of treatment, and you get to go home and no one's missing teeth. How awesome is that? So that's typically the way things go. It's a pretty amazing, amazing treatment. And we do train and people from all over the country come for that. So you would be more than welcome. All right, I'm gonna take a few more questions here. Uh, how far are you booked out? You know, it does change uh, day to day on that, obviously depending on uh, how many people call in from you know previous consultations. Um, I think I looked at a, a, my appointment book and it might be five, six weeks. So, you know, not terrible. Um, you know, we, we share, we have multiple docs here, so we share treatment a little bit. Now, if you're traveling for cosmetic implant uh, or cosmetic full mouth reconstruction or, or implant procedures, you're only gonna see me for that. But as far as our local patients, we share that. So um, it allows us to have a little more flexibility and you don't have to wait as long for treatment. So, good question. All right, I think I got a few more. Um, can you get Invisalign with an implant? Of course, uh, now an implant won't move. Great question, so implant, once an implant's done, it will not move. So a lot of times what we do, let's say you're gonna get an implant and you wanna straighten your teeth, we'll place the implant, put a healing cap on it so that way it's at the gum line, and then move your teeth while your implant integrates in bone. It's a great way to not cost you any more money but shrink this treatment time down to a fraction of the time. So now when you're done with straightening out your teeth, maybe it's six months, now your implant is ready to load. We can put a tooth on it, right? 
So um, it's great. We can find solutions to shorten treatment time and help you out with, uh, with implants and alignment with Invisalign. We do that all the time. Good question. I've been told that uh, removing the crowns on frontal teeth uh, will damage the tooth. Like I say, it was a bad job done. How would you fix something like that? Well, um, so removing the teeth uh, on, so let's say you've already got crown work. You're someone that's watching now and you're like, I've got this. I know I have a mess underneath this. Well, leaving it there is not gonna be any better, right? And um, what we do is we just go through the material and we have special instruments that can actually make the material pop off the tooth. I know it sounds scary, it's really not. We groove the tooth, make it weak, or groove the, um, the material, make it weak enough to where it'll, it'll pop off, it'll come off of the tooth. So we really shouldn't make any change to the tooth underneath if we don't have to. Now if, it's, if there's decay, we'll have to change that. So maybe, I hope that makes sense to, to what we're planning on doing there. All right, um, would you consider a second location like Florida or the Bahamas? Of course, right? Why not? No, I mean, I, 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 love, uh, I love those places. Um, they're both beautiful uh, and I, there's tons of people there to help, but there's so many people here in Springfield to help and people fly from all over the country to trust us to trust me to help them. So I'm honored to that. But uh, man, all my family's here, you know how important family is, right? So I'm a family guy, I got uh, my, my parents here, my, my wife and uh, kids here, obviously we were settled in. So I, I think we're gonna stay in Springfield, Missouri. It's a, it's a nice place. People are friendly here. Um, and uh, not that they're not friendly there, but you know, we're comfortable. It's a good, good place. Um, I'll be coming to you from the North Pole. Yes, from Alaska. You are coming from the North Pole. Let's bring Santa Claus with you, okay? Um, I'd love to see you then uh, from Alaska. I don't, I don't know your name. You have to put your name in there. All right. Um, I need to get four to five plus broken teeth fixed. What's the time frame for pulling teeth? Uh, to possible gum treatments to the final. All right, four to five teeth fixed. What's the time frame from pulling teeth to possible gum treatments to the final completed full mouth rehab? Now, I, I'm not sure if you're asking about, if you're doing an implant prosthetic, that's, the time frame is an hour and a half. So like it, we take teeth out, place the implants in, put in the prosthetic, which when I say prosthetic, just think smile on, fixed on implants, not coming out. You can't take it in and out, we put it in. That happens now and an hour and a half, maybe two hours total time. So um, you're not gonna leave without teeth when we take them out. Um, that's really important to understand, that's a priority. We understand if you're investing a lot of money to fix your smile and you've paid for something that should be fixed in your mouth, you're, you're not gonna leave without teeth. The only exception to that is individual implants. So if you're doing one implant, especially a back tooth, we cannot load that implant. Load is a fancy term for attaching a crown, we can't screw the crown into the implant and allow you to go chewing with it, you'll damage the implant. So it's about safety of the implant. We can't, we can't load that. But if we're connecting six, eight implants together, um, then we can definitely load it as long as we have sturdy enough bone. Uh, that's all part of it. Rarely do we not, are we not able to give you a smile fixed. So, awesome. I have uppers but cannot wear lowers to, too much bone loss, very expensive to get full implants. Where can I find reasonable prices and need bad, unable to eat properly? Yeah. So in the lower arch, it would be um, a 3D x-ray would really help us determine, do you have enough bone? Because so many people, if you're watching, still watching, there's 30 people on there. If you, on here, uh, if, if you um, are, have been told that you don't have enough bone and you have not had a 3D x-ray taken, um, you need to have one taken. Like we do 3D x-rays on all of our new patients and all of our traveling patients, any implant patient, because we wanna make certain that the bone width down lower especially might be sufficient. So if we're doing an implant smile fixed in, it doesn't come in and out, that is gonna be something that we can place those implants a little bit further down. And uh, so, so you might have plenty of bone and just not know it. All right, I'm gonna take a few more questions. All right, guys, so this is awesome though. You guys have great questions. Any tips for CERT uh, based planning and design. You know, uh, Gino, that, that is a tough one. I, I started back with the blue cam technology where it was uh, really kind of out of date. I mean, obviously not, not easy, it's out of date now, um, but we had to design one tooth at a time and I think I learned a lot from that. Um, but, you know, Cerec Doctors does have some good courses. We don't have anything here yet uh, for that, so that might come down the road, uh, how we design and how I'm able to design a smile in, in about an hour, hour and a half, and then mill all those. We have. For those that aren't aware of our channel, you can watch some of our other videos, but we can mill out and create a smile in hours. So 
even if we're keeping teeth and we're not doing implants and we're just going to be raising the bite because of wear or fixing, you know, making it look good with veneers, you don't have to have two visits. It's all done the same day. It's really, really awesome. But uh, designing in software is a little different. There's other approaches where you can have a, a wax up done, right? A smile design done on a model. That's probably an easier way to, way to start. I've been doing those for a long time. I don't do that anymore. But if you're just getting started, that's probably the first way to do it and use what's called biocopy. So, um, you know, I can go on and on about that, but that's that's an option for those trying to figure out the Cerex software. Can you see the bone of the 3D cone uh, beam? Of course, yep. Yes, we can. So 3D cone beam, we can see the, the width of the bone, the height of the bone. We can see where your nerves are at, where your sinuses are. So all of these important landmarks that when we're gonna place implants, and it's not just about knowing where they are in a 3D X-ray, we use guided placement. So all of the implants in our office going into your skull are getting placed utilizing a guide. So we're not just putting them in freehanded and measuring and kind of hoping we get the right spot. We're using some really amazing 3D guiding, com computer 3D guided technology to place that implant exactly where we want it to go for your best health. So pretty cool. And there's some great videos on our channel on 3D guided implants. Looks like I'm almost out of time on this bad boy. So we'll see here. A um, few more minutes. Got a few more questions. All right. I need I need four individual implants. How long will the uh, will I be there? Ballpark price. I have Delta Dental. So yes, we can figure that out. Let's do a virtual consult. So I'm not dodging your question. I just honestly don't know. So we need to do a virtual consultation. So to go to yoursmiledestination.com, fill out the form, give us a few X-rays. But as far as the time, how individual? How long? Probably less than 40 minutes. I can place all four of those implants. Right. So the procedure you'd probably stay one day. You used to come in one evening, we take the 3D x-ray, I make the plan, 3D print our guides, you see me the next morning, I place your implants, uh, and you're out the door, right? So pretty, pretty straightforward to do that. Great question. All right. Let's see. You answered immediately. I took, uh, oh, yep. Awesome. Cool. Uh, let's see. I got a question about the smile. Had you got anything done? Uh, your smile is so perfect. Oh, you're sweet. Uh, no, I have not. It's not perfect, but it's good. I mean, I've got a, I've got a good smile. I appreciate that. I'm not disappointed. I'm happy to share it at least, right? I can, I could uh, imagine what it's like uh, not to be comfortable sharing your smile. At, um, but, uh, but thank you. No, I do not have. I did Invisalign. I had uh, teeth that were not straight, and um, so I used Invisalign to straight, straighten them out. So, all right, guys. I think I'm going to end it right there. I, I, hopefully, this was a helpful uh, live. If you like this, please, you know, thumbs up, share it. Um, I'll do more, you know, if people are liking it. So, um, you know, give me some feedback on this. Um, maybe, uh, maybe some tips. I mean, I won't always do it in my car. I think we we're going to set up another option, um, but uh, I'm not driving this time, right? So it's a dental drive, but I'm not driving because I got some flack, and it probably wasn't the safest idea to record yourself. Now, I didn't sit there and stare at the camera. I've watched the road a little bit, but a little, you know, kind of important. Um, but uh, I love connecting with our patients. Uh, and, and people uh, that, are, that are interested in learning about dentistry. So, um, yeah, I love it. So thanks so much for uh, listening, and uh, you guys have an awesome weekend. Uh, go Chiefs. All right, keep smiling. Looks good on you.